We all have our own ways in which we like to celebrate or remember certain events or people, and to the outside world these may seem a little odd or peculiar. It's the same for communities all around the globe who, for various reasons, have long particular behaviors that, without context, seem truly bizarre. It's time to brace yourself for the ugliest, the strangest, and the most dangerous rituals of all as we look at the top 15 most unusual traditions on Earth. Number 15. Cinnamon Throwing For the continuation of civilization, it's vital that members of society reproduce. And while in many places this is seen as an individual's right to choose, there are some where traditions still exist that were designed to encourage partnerships to be formed. Probably the strangest of these is in Denmark, and you would better hope that if you live there, you've found a life partner before you reach the age of 25. If you haven't been married by the time that you are, then on your birthday, it's open season for your family and friends to cover you in cinnamon, and they don't hold back. You can expect to be covered in bags and bags of the spice, and as anyone who's tried the challenge of eating a spoon of it will know, just a small amount entering your mouth, nose, or eyes can be excruciatingly painful. To make matters worse, they'll also cover you in water to make sure that the cinnamon sticks to you, and you'll spend the rest of the day trying to scrub it off. It's thought that this tradition dates back hundreds of years to the time of traveling spice salesmen, who, because they were always on the move, were usually single, and called perbesvens, which means pepper men. This makes more sense when a single reaches the age of 30, because when this happens, the tradition takes place again, but instead of cinnamon, they use freshly ground pepper. Number 14. The Baby Jumping Festival If you find yourself in a small Spanish town called Castillo de Murcia, on the week after Trinity Sunday, you might well bear witness to one of the strangest Catholic traditions of all, known as El Colacho, or baby jumping. The event is believed to date back as far as 1620, and the idea behind it is to cleanse babies of original sin so they're able to go on and live fruitful lives. Different churches around the world have their own ways of doing this, usually by baptism. But in Castillo de Mercia, it's done by having the devil symbolically choose to pass by babies that have been offered to him. There are various events that take place during the week, and these culminate on the Sunday when babies that had been born in the previous 12 months are laid on a mattress in the street, and then a person dressed in a devil costume runs as fast as he can towards them and jumps over them at the last moment. In a somewhat controversial tradition, even with people who live in the town, and even led to Pope Benedict asking Spanish priests to cease their involvement in it and instead offer baptism as an alternative. Despite his pleas, El Colacho is now so ingrained into the minds of the people who live in the town that there's no sign of it stopping anytime soon. Number 13. Famadihana There are countless different ways that people around the world memorialize their dead, but perhaps one of the more unusual and interesting is Famadihana, which is performed by the Malagasy people of Madagascar. Believed to have begun at some point during the 17th century, the ceremony, which means turning of the bones, sees families remove the bodies of their ancestors from their crypts so that they can rewrap them with fresh cloth and linen, and write their names clearly on the new coverings so that they'll never be forgotten. Once this is done, it's time to party, and they'll lift the corpses above their heads as they dance around the tombstone before laying them back to rest in the crypt. This behavior may seem strange to other cultures around the world, but it's based on the people's belief that they should celebrate the life that was lived by the dead rather than mourning the loss. Furthermore, according to their religion, the recently departed will only make their way to the afterlife to meet up with their ancestors once their corporeal body has completely decomposed, and this takes many years in some instances, so the ceremony aids with this tradition. The traditional celebration of Famadihana has become less common in recent decades, however, after the increased use of silk cloth that lasts longer and is more expensive to replace, as well as concerns that the tradition helps to spread diseases throughout the community. Still, in smaller communities, it's regularly practiced and will most likely continue for centuries to come. Number 12. Camel Wrestling Sports involving animals are commonplace throughout the world, and while it's now usually races that take place because fighting is seen as cruel, there is one exception, camel wrestling. It's a tradition that can still be seen to this day in some regions of Turkey, and records show that it originated as far back as 2,400 years ago. It's a behavior that camels exhibit in the wild in order to attract a mate, and so the argument is that the animals aren't being encouraged to do anything that they wouldn't do regardless. 
There are efforts to prohibit this tradition because it's unfair to the animals. And it's quite possible that this is one tradition that won't continue for much longer. Usually held during mating season, two males are put into a ring with a female nearby, and they begin trying to assert their dominance. They do this by using their necks to try to push the other to the ground, and a camel is declared the winner if it's successful in doing so, or if its opponent flees. There are around 30 festivals that are held across Turkey each year where camel wrestling is the main event, which attracts tens of thousands of visitors. It's not entirely risk-free to spectators, though, because it's not uncommon for the camels to run into the crowd, or even for trainers to fight one another because they disagree with the outcome of a match. Number 11. Monkey Buffet Festival Usually, festivals around the world involve producing lavish and exquisite meals for huge groups of people to sit down and enjoy. But there's one tradition that's held every year in Loburi, Thailand, where the guests of honor are monkeys instead. Specifically, they are a species of crab-eating macaque, of which there's a population of around 2,000 in the surrounding area. And the local people put on the festival to ensure the monkeys stay there, because they're believed to bring good luck to the region. The festival begins with a huge parade with dancers dressed as monkeys, and then the actual monkeys are lured in where they can find a huge banquet table in the midst of the ruins of a 13th century temple, where a lavish meal of fruit and vegetables have been put on for them. In total, there's around two tons of produce, and the monkeys revel in the meal that they're given. Amazingly, this is a tradition that's been taking place for more than a thousand years, and has its origins in the ancient legend of Rama who was a divine prince whose wife, Sita, had been kidnapped by a demon lord. It was only with the help of the monkey king, Hanuman, and his army that it was possible to free her. And since then, monkeys have been regarded on an equal level as people in the local community. Number 10, the Gurning Championships. What's the most unattractive face you've ever been able to pull? And would you ever believe that by contorting your mouth and cheeks in a disgusting way would actually give you the opportunity to win a competition? Well, it's true. Welcome to the world of the Gurning Championships, and what has to be the ugliest tradition on Earth. According to the dictionary, Gurning is the act of creating an extremely distorted facial expression that involves pushing your lower jaw out as far as possible and bringing the lower lip up to cover the upper one. Amazingly, the ability to do this better than anyone else has been a tradition in rural English villages for at least 175 years, with contestants usually wearing a horse collar as a way to frame their face. Usually, the best gurners are those without any teeth, because this enables them to protrude their jaw much further. And those that are at the top of their game are even able to cover their noses with their lower lips. One of the most famous gurners of recent times, Peter Jackman, actually purposefully had all of his teeth removed so then he'd be better at it, which is a level of dedication to the unusual practice that's far beyond where most people are willing to go. Number 9. Porterabend Weddings are events that are notorious for strange traditions. Did you know, for example, that the throwing of the bouquet had its origins at a time when it was quite common for people to kidnap brides for jealousy? and that flowers were thrown to distract the crowd while she made her escape. Modern-day weddings don't usually involve anything as sinister as that, but you'll still see some rather bizarre rituals such as the Polterabend in Germany. The idea is to bring good luck and fortune to the happy couple, so the night before the wedding, family and guests arrive at their house and smash as much porcelain as they can. The tradition originated from the phrase, shards bring luck, which is used to refer to bowls and pots being made by potters, and has now become a fun festivity as part of the wedding celebrations. Guests will throw and smash virtually anything they can get their hands on, such as stoneware, flower pots, tiles, sinks, and toilet bowls, but glass is normally avoided. In an unfortunate twist, it's the responsibility of the soon-to-be-wed couple to clear up the mess afterwards, something that's said to signify the fact that once they are married, they'll have to suffer together through tough situations and events throughout their lives. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Bayanihan For most of us, the concept of moving house involves signing a contract for a new dwelling, then spending days packing up all of our possessions before they're loaded into a truck and then unpacking everything at the other end. For many, it's one of the most stressful things that we ever do. But in some rural communities of the Philippines, it's a communal activity called Bayanahan. 
The term itself translates roughly to mean being a part of a community and refers to everyone coming together to achieve a particular goal, which in this case isn't simply moving someone's belongings to a new place, but involves moving the entire house to a new plot. A traditional house in the Philippines is called a Baje Kubo and is made of bamboo, leaves, and other easy-to-find materials. With the help of around 15 to 20 people, it is possible to tie bamboo poles underneath the structure and simply lift it up and work together in unison to carry it to the new place. As thanks for their efforts, the helpers are treated to a lavish meal by the homeowners in what is a great example of people coming together to help each other out. Number 7. Taipusam There are a number of religious traditions around the world that involve acts of devotion to the higher powers that worshippers believe in but there's none as visually striking as the festival of Taipusam, which is celebrated by the Tamil Hindu community. Believed to have originated during one of the battles between the Asuras and the Devas, the Devas who were losing completely surrendered themselves to Shiva, who rewarded them by creating a mighty warrior from his own power. Today, the festival is held during the full moon of the Tamil month of Thai, which is between January and February and sees practitioners performing acts of devotional sacrifices. This may be by following very strict diets, learning elaborate dances, showing feats of endurance, and most notably, piercing their skin in order to cleanse it. They'll pass skewers through their tongues and cheeks, and the most devoted will have huge number of piercings put across their bodies, and may even use them to pull huge weights across the ground. It's a magnificent festival to witness, but one that brings devotees far closer to their maker than the rest of us will ever have a chance to be. Number 6. Krampusnacht For most of us, the creepiest festival of the year is Halloween. It's the time that ghosts and ghouls come out and pranks can be played and dark and evil rituals are performed. But if you think that's the most frightening tradition of all, then you clearly haven't been to Austria and Bavaria in the lead-up to Christmas. In Alpine folklore, there are three good legendary figures that arrive in December, St. Nicholas, Des Moros, and Santa Claus. There is, however, one evil character that arrives alongside St. Nicholas, and his name is Krampus, a horned goat-like creature with fangs, thick brown fur, and long pointed tongue. It's his job to frighten the children that have misbehaved, and he arrives on the 5th of December, which is the evening before the Feast of St. Nicholas. It has become a tradition for that night to be known as Krampus Night, or Krampusnacht and it's now when people dress up as the hairy devil and march through town, trying to scare anyone that stands in the way. In recent years, Krampus has become more well-known around the rest of the world thanks to various TV shows and movies, but you'll never truly know the fear and evil that surrounds the character until you experience Krampusnacht for yourself. Number 5. Day of the Geese The Basque people who live in regions along the border between Spain and France see themselves as the direct descendants of the Stone Age inhabitants of the Pyrenees Mountains and are regarded as one of the oldest cultures in Europe. Part of the way they see themselves is a highly competitive and strong community, and this is reflected in a number of their traditions, but perhaps none more so than the Day of the Geese. This is a highly controversial tradition that's held every year in the fishing town of Lequitio in Biscay, Spain and begins with a greased goose being suspended above the harbor by a rope. Boats then pass underneath, and competitors proceed to hold on to it and try to rip it free, which results in its decapitation. The rope is controlled on either side by other members of the community, who pull and release it to fling the competitors up into the sky and dunk them into the water. If a person lets go without keeping hold of the goose's body, then they have failed, and it's time for someone else to try. If they successfully take the goose, then they're declared the champion and get to keep it. While it may be incredible to watch, there have, of course, been concerns about animal cruelty during the event. Originally, the goose would have been alive during the ordeal, and while this has now changed to using a dead goose, there are still calls for the festival to be canceled for good. With such huge celebrations surrounding it, however, this seems unlikely in the near future, and the young men of the town still use it as a way to show off their strength and physical prowess. Number 4. The Guere Wall Festival there are a number of different beauty pageants that take place around the world, but these usually feature women making themselves look as beautiful as possible for the crowds. These, quite rightfully, have been subjected to criticism because of the way they objectify the contestants who take part, but there is one event that takes place every year where the shoe is on the other foot. The Guere Wall Festival is a tradition that's taken place for hundreds of years by the Wodabe Fula people in Niger. 
Happening on the southern edge of the Sahara Desert at the end of the rainy season, it sees the young men of the community applying traditional face paint, elaborate costumes, and handcrafted jewelry in an attempt to attract the eye of one of the unmarried women. It's a human courtship event like no other. It features a traditional dance called the yake, camel races, and various other competitions, and it's only those that are able to prove how interesting, energetic, and beautiful that they are will walk away with a potential wife at the end. Number 3. Baby Throwing There are countless practices around the world whereby people try to bring good fortune to the lives of newborns and their families. But undoubtedly, the most frightening and horrific from the point of view of outsiders is one that's taken place across both Hindu and Muslim communities across India for centuries. Baby Throwing the tradition is most prevalent in the state of Karnataka and sees crowds of people gathering on the ground alongside a building, while a priest holds the baby out of the window at a height of up to 30 feet. They pray and bless the baby, shake them vigorously, and then drop them to the ground where a group is waiting with a blanket to safely catch them. Every time a baby is caught, the entire crowd erupts with applause, pass the child between one another before returning them to their mother. It's probably the most controversial tradition anywhere in the world, and there's been a number of attempts to get it banned. It seemed like this has been a successful in 2011, but soon after it began to happen again. Participants saying that it's what their religion tells them to do, and they'd be going against the wishes of their beliefs if they ever stopped. It should be noted that there's no evidence to suggest any baby has ever come to any harm during one of these ceremonies. And while they may look terrible to those of us unfamiliar with the tradition, it's been happening for a very long time and is a core part of the local belief system. Number 2. The Blackening Of all the strange and unusual wedding traditions there are, one of the weirdest takes place in Scotland and is called the Blackening. It's unclear quite when it began, with researchers suggesting that it was at some point in the 19th century. And it's most common in the rural areas of northeastern Scotland, the Highlands, and the Orkney and Shetland Islands. The basic principle behind the tradition is that before the wedding, the bride and the groom are made feeling extremely messy and uncomfortable, and are paraded in front of as many people as possible. To do this, they're often secured in the back of an open truck, and are covered in a range of gross and sticky substances, such as food, tar, feathers, flour, and anything else that can be found. Things like pig's blood and tripe have also been known to be used, and the only rule seems to be to make them as sticky and messy as possible before being publicly humiliated. Quite why this is a tradition isn't exactly clear, although it's thought to have developed from an earlier practice whereby those who are about to be married would be cleansed of all sin. This has now become something that sees them being dirtied, but it's possible that the necessity to then fully clean yourself afterwards is actually the desired end result. Number 1. Battle of the Oranges as anyone who's been involved in one will know, food fights are incredible fun and tend to get extremely messy. But what's amazing is that in Italy there's a huge annual food fight that's taken place for hundreds of years. Known as the Battle of the Oranges, the tradition is held in the northern Italian city of Ivrea and is a memorial to an event in the 12th or 13th century when residents rebelled against a tyrannical ruler. Each year, a girl is chosen to play the role of the woman who was being harassed by the evil king, and thousands and thousands of people who will take part are split into nine combat teams. Moving around by foot and representing the everyday citizens, they are pitted against a further team in carts that represents the tyrant's troops. The teams face off with each other and pelt their opponents with oranges, which represent the stones that were thrown at the castle's walls during the rebellion. Originally, beans were used, and then apples, and it's not exactly clear why oranges are now the weapon of choice, especially as the fruits don't even grow in the surrounding region. This means that huge numbers have to be imported each year for the festival, with estimates suggesting that as much as a half a million pounds in weight are brought in, most of which are leftovers from the winter crop in southern Italy. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.